In this book, Wild Ones, so tell us what uh, the premise of this book was and how it got birthed in your heart. I was writing another book about Reformation. God gave me this message, I had this encounter about Reformation back in, in Reading in 2009. But I was writing this book about Reformation at the end of 2021, and it just was not the book that God wanted me to write. He said, I want you to write something bigger. I want you to write the manual that you never had the prophetic manual that you never had that would have led you through all of the process and the, the ups and downs of ministry and the things that you just didn't know. And so I began writing this book and I, it felt like I was a fly on the wall watching the Lord write a book. It was ministering to my heart. I'm like, this, this is a book that's going to bring healing and it's also going to raise up a generation that are going to go to the front lines for this next move of God. You know, I love your passion for uh, truth. And, you know, we hear so much today, especially in the church, Things have been watered down and, you know, let's just love everyone and, and it's okay if you're living this lifestyle. And, you know, of course we welcome everyone to the church, but there's, there's no truth with the love and, and right. love without truth will never work in the eyes of God, will it? No, it won't. And we're seeing this, we're seeing this uprising, well, since 2020, where even in the church, it's really infiltrated the church as well, where it's all love everybody, accept everybody. Of course we accept everybody, but it doesn't change the fact that it's truth that changes us. Yeah. And we need to be people that know how to love people, but also reveal truth that stops them from going down the way, the wrong path. And right now we need the church to rise up wielding that hammer of truth more than ever before. So what happened to you personally to really ignite this passion that you have to stand against the narrative and the woke mentality that's going on in the world today? Well, I feel like for Christy, my wife and I, it actually began when we began standing to see Roe v. Wade come down. Um, I woke up one night to hearing my wife groaning and, and she was having this encounter with the Lord. She woke up crying. She said, we must see Roe v. Wade come down. That was 2011. And we just began going to march as we began praying. This was in Australia. And there's and your wife right there. She's that's my wife. A picture of her. Yes. Yeah. And uh, she's, she's scarily intercessory prophetic. She just is uh, this giant killer, you know. You and recognize that backdrop. Yeah, that's you? the headlands. <laughs> yeah, Actually, yeah. I took Rebecca there on one of our very first dates. I made her bike up that hill. <laughs> yeah. And, and this, of course, is when you were actually praying over which city here with we Louis were, This was just a few weeks ago in Los Angeles at oh, cool. Griffith Observatory. Oh, okay. We've been doing these prayer strike events. The first one was in New Mexico in February. We went there because they, the satanic church in New Mexico was starting uh, an abortion clinic. Mm. and they wanted to begin doing these abortion rituals. So we You'd went there. you think that that would wake up the church, the satanic church is starting an abortion clinic. It's going hand in hand. So we went to the Blood of Christ mountain, Mountains, the Sangre de Cristo Mountains in New Mexico, to Red River, mm. and we went there, and with a bunch of hungry people, we, we took communion, we beheld the Lamb of God, and we just declared that this state would be a state. I love that. So finish that. Um, I'm sorry I interrupted you, but the, your passion for truth yeah. And standing up against the narrative that is so prevalent today in, in many churches as well. Yeah, we knew that we needed to be people that at all costs spoke truth. For me, I'll, I'll tell you my personal So Roe v. Wade was for your wife. That's kind of where it started. Like, but we were both doing that. But yeah, yeah that was her conviction even yeah. more than mine. But we began seeing God do incredible things where for maybe uh, 12 years ago, no one was talking about it in the church in Australia and even in, in the U.S., and it, suddenly it was on the conversations of the church and we knew it was coming. And then uh, God gave me a dream and God my gave my wife a dream that at the, before the anniversary or the jubilee of Roe v. Wade, it was going to come down. Wow. I saw Lou Engel in a dream on a, on a live and he was prophesying that Roe v. Wade would fall and then it happened. Wow. And it happened and we rejoiced yeah. here at Daystar. We rejoiced knowing how near and dear to the heart of God yep. this decision was and that it be overturned in America. And yet, and yet much of the church was totally silent. It was unbelievable. Could you ever imagine? No. It's like when Goliath was no more, what do you do? You suddenly, you suddenly coddle his family. You, 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 this, is, this is the ridiculousness that we saw, is that instead of saying, wow, this, this Goliath has been taken out, we need to be careful of what we say. And we need to like 
tiptoe around this. We need to rejoice when evil is extinguished. Yes, amen. You know, in the church, we need to to be the ones that say, hey, we're going to be the wielders of truth and we're going to celebrate when truth is exalted. Absolutely. And righteousness exalts a nation. Well, I know that, uh, Jonathan, you'd be interested in this as well, but you had, in chapter 30 of the book, you you had several dreams that are kind of relevant to what's going on today. Mm. The first one was uh, the classroom is in session. Yeah. So tell us about that dream. When did you have it and how does it relate to what's going on? And then you had uh, dream number two, the threshing room floor, and then number three, pick up what you dropped. So maybe you can go through those for us. Yeah, sure. Well, in 2020, I had the dream that the classroom was in session and it was during all of the different things that were taking place, you know, that was a wild year. And I feel like the Lord was really wanting to really test my heart as well. There was so much opportunity to just maybe go along with a narrative or just maybe be silent, not say too much so you don't get attacked. We weren't guilty of that, by the way. No, you were not, by the way. You guys are incredible. We were not guilty of that. Okay, go ahead. (laughs) And the Lord gave me this uh, another dream, by the way, and he showed me that the spirit that was behind this certain justice movement that was rising was a hijack of a true justice and restoration movement. And I needed to share it. I needed to say, hey, this is a hijack. I will not get behind this. And it was like a choose this day whom you will serve moment uh, for many, you know. And this dream came and in this dream, I called it classroom was in session. I'm in front of this, I'm in front of this uh, classroom and I'm beginning to speak about about the father's love. And I see this, this young guy and he's a Gen Z fella and uh, I look at him, instantly see that there's this spirit on him of progressive Christianity. And then I look around the room and there's all these other demonic spirits that are trying to attach to people. It was just the, the woke church, it was the truth in love movement, the Me Too, all the different stuff that was going on. And I just went over and started praying for them and they were getting delivered and falling on the floor. It was the Lord showing me, he wanted, he wanted to show me, hey, don't coddle this, this is demonic. Do not coddle these things and go, yeah, we just need to kind of put up, you know, the different thing on Instagram for that day to kind of do the, just to play along and tell everyone that you care for this thing. This is not that time. This is a time to see as a church what is clearly, clearly the Lord and what is clearly demonic, begin to draw a line in the sand with that and stand for truth. Yeah. The threshing room floor. The threshing room floor. I'm trying to remember that dream, but I do know that it was the Lord speaking to me about the season of, uh, of the church going through a major purging and uh, separating the, the wheat from the tares. And removing what's keeping us in bondage. That's right. That That's was part right. of it. The true church is emerging and we're going to experience a second wind. The That's church right. is about to experience a fresh baptism of the Mm, Holy Ghost and fire. So the threshing, you know how the threshing happens, right? Yeah. Even even John spoke about in Jesus, he'd bring the baptism of fire that would come. And it was, it's this, this place where the grain we go into would be beaten down to separate the grain. And then the wind comes that the winnowing fork would bring the wind. And uh, it's the Lord separating what's not of him and then putting the fresh wind of his, of his spirit upon us. And I feel like we're at the beginning of that now. Yeah. I feel like we are. We are. We've been through this purging last year. The last three years have been, uh, it's been a huge shift. Right. And the third dream was um, pick up what you dropped. It's time to pick up your hope yeah. and your joy. It's time to pick up your authority mm. and to walk in that. And I, I really sense that. And I know I have sensed personally from the Lord that there are so many of you that he is calling home mm. that you have been sedentary, if you will, and really not in the plan of God for your life, not doing what he purposed for you to do from your mother's womb. And some of you are just kind of even out of relationship with God because of things that have happened in your life. But God is calling you to the battle. He's calling you to the forefront. You were born for such a time as this. Speak to that if you would. Nate. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can look at my own life and a lot of people I know, I see that this has been a season, maybe the, the last three or four years, especially where life's been difficult. It's been difficult to be a believer. It really has. Like this has been a season that the enemy has been opposing everything we do. Um, so many people have uh, have just dropped down in the battlefield and haven't got back up. 
Yeah. You know, I know there's many of you out there and you're feeling that. You're like, I don't know how to get back up. Nate. I don't know how to actually, that's all great. Being on the front lines for Jesus is great, but how do I get back up? We've dropped so many things. This is a time where God is going to resurrect what fell. The scripture that comes to mind is about the seed falling to the ground and dying. Yes. The only way you can sometimes multiply the, or what God can actually do, what he wants to do through you, Sometimes we got to see those things fall to the ground and suddenly things begin to spring back up. And I know today that God is putting things back in your hands that you thought were dead and they were done. I truly believe that, Joni. If that's you today, I'd love for you to call and let us pray with you, encourage you today. And if you don't know the Lord, um, there's not a better time than you could right now just to pray that prayer and say, Jesus, I need you now in my life. My life has fallen apart. Mm. I've tried to do it my way. Now I need you to come in and change my heart. Forgive me. Come into my life. Be Lord in my life. And I'm so sorry. I'm telling you, he'll meet you right where you are. So Jonathan, uh, when he was talking about the satanic church and all, it was interesting because Jonathan Shuttlesworth is hilarious. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a programmer on Daystar. He's got a great sense of humor. So on Instagram, he did a whole thing congratulating the Satanic Church. They looked like they had filled the room up 20%, at least 20%. There were, they might have hit 100 that were in the room. Good job, guys. Maybe next year you'll go over 100. I mean, and making fun, and it's, it, it really, we, we just get so serious about what the enemy's doing when it's nothing, it's nothing compared to what the Spirit of God is doing. And I just laughed so hard. It was so funny. Because we're like, oh, the satanic church, they're tearing up a Bible. That's all, where they're tearing up a Bible. They're just people who are lost mm. that we need to love and pray for, but not be moved by no. what the enemy's doing because it pales in comparison yeah. to what God is going to do. Is that right? Absolutely. <laughs> that, uh, that prayer event we had at the observatory, I just found <laughs> out yesterday that there was a whole prayer coven sitting behind us in the bushes. And the most hilarious thing was, I didn't know or see them because there were so many people around. I went up and hugged them all when I was chasing my daughter around and didn't even know it. They all got a hug. That's funny. They got a Holy Ghost hug, Jonathan. Yep. Well, it's so good. I know you're about to preach, but I was curious. So you came from California to Texas. <clears throat> what brought you here? Well, it's, that's, yeah, it's a long story, but we just felt like the Lord was calling us here. We came here in our RV uh, the end of 2021 when we're in a lot of transition and just felt God calling us to Texas. And the Lord had given us many uh, dreams and many uh, prophecies about what God was gonna birth through Dallas, Fort Worth area. This is a birthing place. And so mm -hmm. we're here to just to be a part of that and what God's doing in this hour. It's time to come out of hiding. Since the pandemic, there's been such a war on the church to send them into hiding and shut up their voices. And I know there's so many that are watching today who say, Nate, I don't, I don't know how, but I feel just so trapped. I feel like I'm stuck. I feel like my voice is, has been shut down. I feel like it's been so hard to connect to God. I feel like it's been so hard just to be able to raise my voice or share what God's speaking to me about. And I just want to say to you today that the Lord is calling you out of that place. In the story of, of Elijah, when he confronted the prophets of Baal and Jezebel, there's a scripture that says that Obadiah, he sent a hundred prophets and hid them into caves. I believe we've been in a period of time that the enemy has been trying to send the church underground. He's been trying to get you to be silent and to send you underground where you'd be ineffective, where you'd be silent but the Lord is calling you out today. He's calling you out of that place of defeat. He's calling you out of that place of despair. I feel like even now as I speak, he's beginning to lift off. He's beginning to lift off that spirit of heaviness that's been trying to settle over you. He's, trying, he's breaking every single tie, every witchcraft word, every single thing that's been trying to stifle the call of God on your life. And he's beginning to, he's beginning to bubble forth a fresh song and a sound that's going to come out out of you and shatter the enemy's plans. And so today I want to pray for you. And so I remember back in 2020 when everything was going on, I remember there was this moment I was sitting at my piano and it was like I could play, but there was something that was stuck. I just, I, I don't know, this worship wouldn't come out of me. I, Lord, I said, Lord, I just feel, 
Like something's trying to prevent me from singing and worshiping. Something's trying to prevent me from being a voice right now. And then I just, I, I felt like the Lord put his hands over my hands and he began to just play with me and out of me came a roar. And today a roar is going to come out of you again in Jesus' mighty name. And I believe there are so many people here today that have been feeling like, well, I've been stuck. I've been disabled. I've been feeling under the enemy's control where he's just throwing lies at me, insecurities at me every single day. Today, those things are going to shift off you in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Lord is going to unleash a fresh message and he's going to launch you into the calling that the enemy has been so afraid that you would step into. So Lord, I just thank you today. I thank you today, Lord, that even by the sound of my voice, that muzzles are breaking. That today things are moving, things are shifting. Those who've been sitting on the sidelines feeling like they've been burnt out, tired, weary, disabled, they're beginning to come out of those places. You see, we're in a time and an hour of history that the Lord needs you to arise. He needs the church to arise. He needs you to speak. He needs you to sing. He needs your worship. He needs your sound. The church has been shut up. The church has been underground, but the Lord is raising up a remnant who will not be silent, who will not be scared, who will not be bullied by the narrative of the enemy that is going on around the world right now, who will not bow to culture, who will not bow to mixture. And I know you're watching at home right now and you're just like, that's me. I'm just not going to be one of those people. Well, right now the Lord is unleashing your voice. He's unleashing your voice. Yeah, I just feel that. So many people right now, you're watching this. Things are breaking. Things are shifting for you. There's someone watching right now and you're like, I'm feeling like something's just beginning to break off my, my neck and shoulders. I'm feeling like this lightness coming over me. Yeah, the Lord is breaking that thing that's been over you. You haven't even realized there's been a, silence, a silencing agenda that's come against your voice. There's people that are watching and it's been a while since you've dreamt. It's been a while since you've been hearing from the Lord in that fresh way. That's being restored today. That's being restored to you today. There's someone watching right now. You've had so many health issues and difficulties. You're not even sure why. The enemy's been trying to distract people. He's been trying to bombard you and surround you with circumstances and situations to get your eyes off your assignment and your calling. But today that shifts in the mighty name of Jesus. Today that shifts in Jesus' mighty name. There's a scripture in Jeremiah that says, His word is like a fire shut up in my bones. I can't keep it silent. It must come out. And I feel the beckoning of the Holy Spirit to release that over you today. That what He's placed inside of you is not going to return void. What He's placed inside of you has a purpose. He didn't give you that dream for it to go nowhere. He didn't give you that assignment for it to just die before it's time. He didn't give you that ministry to birth just to see it fizzle and go nowhere. He did not give you that message so that it would fall on deaf ears. It's time that you emerge out of that place that you've been in, that stronghold, that place where things have been falling apart, the place where you've been rehearsing the pain, the betrayals, the hurts, the things that didn't work out the way you expected that they would. It's time to say, God, You've given me this for a reason. I'm going to see it come to pass. And I'm going to raise my voice by faith today. And that's your key is by faith. Maybe you're watching this. You need to shout. You need to do something. Like me, I've been in these situations. You need sometimes just need to do something by faith. To see the movement begin again, sometimes you just need to move by faith. So right now, just get up. Whatever you're doing, if you're in your car, maybe don't get up. But if you're at home, stand up for a moment. Begin to shake off and do a prophetic act with me. In the name of Jesus, 
I choose today to leave the cave. I choose today to leave the bondage that I've been in that's been holding me back from the call of God in my life. And I choose today to say yes, a fresh yes to God. Can you do that today? Can you just say yes, Jesus? I choose to put aside the things that I've been just rehearsing. I've lost my passion. I've lost I've lost that first love. I've lost, I've lost the fire. But today, God, by faith, I'm standing up. I'm shaking this off. And I choose, I choose to step forward out of this place I've been in and step back into my destiny and my calling. Interestingly, in the story of Elijah, just after the fire came down on the altar and they got rid of the prophets of Baal and God did an amazing thing. Jezebel threatened Elijah and he got into fear and he went into hiding. And he said to God, God said to him, what are you doing here? Because he went into hiding. And he, he said to the Lord, I'm the only faithful one. Everyone's fallen away. And God had to remind him. God had to remind him of what his voice sounded like again. I feel like the Lord wants to remind you today what his voice sounds like. Maybe it's been a while. Maybe you just... God, I don't even know what you sound like anymore. It's been hard road. I feel that today. There's so many people are saying, Lord, I don't know what you sound like anymore. I only know the sound of the disappointment that I wake up to, the anxiety that is crippling me at every turn. That's breaking today. You're going to hear the voice of the Lord. We know the story. God showed the, there was a earthquake, there was lightning and God's voice wasn't in those things. It was in the still small voice. And today, God wants you to hear his voice afresh. Something happened after that, that Elijah did, that you need to do today, and it's going to shift everything. It says that Elijah, he left that place, wrapped his mantle around his head. It's time today to leave the place you've been in. It's time today to wrap that mantle, that authority, that calling of God. You've forgotten that you've dropped Wrap it around yourself again. Say, this, it's your way of reminding yourself and reminding God, this, who's, ooh, this is who I am. This is what God's placed upon my life. I'm not going to let it fall to ruin. I'm not going to let it just fall by the wayside. I'm not going to allow the enemy to rob what God's given me. And you wrap that around yourself again. Maybe you're a prophet. Maybe you're an evangelist. Maybe you encourage people, whatever it is. Wrap it around yourself. Just shout it out right now. Just say, this is who God's called me to be. Maybe for many years, you've not seen yourself in that way. You've been identifying with all of the hurts and all of the things that, that maybe you've just been lost in the fear of the times. God's breaking that fear off you today. And you're gonna wrap that mantle around yourself. You're gonna look Jesus in the eyes and say, Lord, this is my fresh yes to step into being a voice in this time of history. I'm not going to, I'm not gonna fall back. I'm gonna stand at the front lines, front lines boldly and I'm gonna see everything that you said that I would do and everything that I've called to be come to pass and come to fruition in Jesus' name. So one more time, stand up for me. Shake, your, just, just begin to move. Just begin to shake your arms and legs and, and let's just continue this prophetic act for a moment. Defeat, get off me now. Hopelessness, get off me now. Silence, get off me now. Holy Spirit, release their roar in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just decree over the church, the global church right now, we just decree, release your roar. You will not be silent in this time of history. You will be a voice for the times. You will call forth the things that God is saying and doing in the earth and you will not shrink back from fear. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and we love not our lives unto death. It means we're all in and today he's asking, are you all in? Are you choosing to step away from that rat race you've been in, that religious Mouse wheel, you've been running on. This is wearing you out. There's someone on here right now. I feel like you're actually running a ministry. You run a ministry and you're at your wit's end. Finances are dried up. Things are not working the way that they used to work. The Lord is saying to you today, 
Get on your face. Get on your, get on your, get on your face today before me. I'm going to show you a different way of doing things. I've been trying to show you for a while. That's, that method is no longer going to be conducive where I'm leading you. Maybe some things aren't working in your life the way they used to work. The Lord is simply saying to you today, will you surrender those old plans, those old methods to me? Just even now, get on your, get on your knees and say, Lord, I surrender them to you. I want your way. I'm tired. I'm burnt out. I want to step into the rhythms of grace again. I want to feel the wind of the Spirit on me again in a fresh way. I've been in this place of just constant striving, trying to keep doors open, hustle, the bustle. The Lord's leading you out of that today. He's leading you out of defeat. He's leading you out of powerlessness and He's giving you back your voice and your authority because that is who you were called to be. You are the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. And lastly, let me just speak to the prophetic church. That's all of us because we're all called to be prophetic. But for those who know they carry a message, but you've been feeling muzzled. You've been feeling silenced. You've been feeling like almost there's a timidity that's trying to grab a hold of you. I command every muzzle to break now in the name of Jesus. Every demonic assignment that's been trying to keep you silent and keep you from speaking forth that message that's going to shatter the prisons of, of those who've been bound. The Lord today, He is igniting you in that ministry, in that calling. Even today, God's gonna confirm, He's gonna say, He's gonna show you even in another way. Yes, yes, it's time for you to step out of that place. Maybe you've been in a wilderness season that's lasted for a while, but now it's time to step out of that place. It's time to begin to go, you know what? I'm not going to ignore the call of God in my life. I'm not going to just busy myself with all these other religious activities when I've called, been called to carry a movement too. Today, God is saying, step into that. Make a step. Step into the permission of heaven today. The Father approves of you. He loves you. And it's time for you to embrace it completely and fully and stop apologizing for what He's placed inside of you. Lord, I thank you for the families even right now that are watching the marriages that are people that right now are going through things. I thank you, Lord, that you are healing and restoring relationships and families. Release the roar that the enemy's been trying to hold back in the name of Jesus. Amen. I just want to invite Jonathan to come and join me as well. Thank you, Nate. Amen. Such a powerful word. And I believe that many people were touched. In fact, we had people calling in all throughout the show today. Wow. And they'll continue to call in as this re-airs two more times today. So um, I'm going to have you pray. Before you do, I want to encourage everyone, go online, get the book, The Wild Ones. Um, it will stir you. And we want to see what Nate talks about in this book, Release the Wildness in Everybody come out as boldness arises in the church today. Nate, will you lead us in a prayer yeah, as we wrap absolutely. today's show? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Lord, I thank you yes, right God. now for every single person that's called in, messaged yes, in, is feeling the Lord hug their hearts today. And they're saying, Lord, I need a fresh touch of the Spirit. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, touch them, mm -hmm. touch them, touch them, touch them, heal them, restore them now. In the mighty name of Jesus, command that anxiety to leave now in Jesus' name. The fear leave now in Jesus' yes, mighty name. We speak restoration over every area the enemy has tried to say, there'll be never restoration, there'll never be restoration in these places. We just right now release the resurrection power of Jesus into every prayer request. We command everybody be restored, every mind be restored. Someone's being healed of bipolar right now in Jesus' yes, name. God. Someone, Amen. there's someone on here right now that there's addictions breaking. Someone's coming into their right mind as we speak as well in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you. Yes, God. That you love your children. You love your children. And today we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, heal, restore, and set them free. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.